Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's All Me. We got a brand new video for you today. A video that I've never done before. A style of video that I've never done before. But I mentioned it in my burping contest Q&A video. I got a lot of great comments saying that they wanted the mukbang, the mukbang. So here we are. The, the style of mukbang video that I'm going to be doing today is what would be called story time. So I'm gonna be eating my food, which I'm gonna showcase here in just a second. And I'm going to be telling the story of the It's All Me video that never came to be. It's a crazy story. It's one of the craziest nights that I've, I think I've ever had. And I'm really excited to tell the story. It's been almost a year since this happened. And so it's just been sitting inside of me for all of this time, almost 365 days. So finally I was like, you know what? It's time that I tell this story. So here we go. Let's dive right in. But first let's showcase what I've made for my mukbang. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a double cheeseburger with waffle buns. See if I can hold that so you can see it. Waffle buns with peanut butter. And then I'm going to cover it with maple syrup, okay? This is fully keto. These are keto chocolate chip waffles. That is keto peanut butter, no sugar added. These are 80% lean, 20% fat burgers with pepper jack cheese. And we got sugar-free syrup. I love syrup. Some of you may be thinking this is disgusting. But baby, isn't that what mukbangs or mukbangs are all about? Is being gooey and messy and just awesome? Oh, also, because you guys know I can, can belch once in a while, I got some cotton candy carbonated water that I'm gonna be drinking today as well. So, might be a little bit of a mukbang story time burping contest. Let's put some maple syrup on this bad boy. Get my napkin here, because it's gonna get messy. All right, there is our syrup, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna get really messy, so I'm gonna flip this over actually. And let's take our first bite. Mmm. That is good. Nice big bite there. Double cheese, some cheese and some peanut butter. Peanut butter is pretty sticky. Mm. Mm. Creamy and delicious. <sighs> the story takes place last May. Tiny and I, and a good friend of ours, decided that we were going to go to this infamous location that we'd heard about for years. It's this camp that has this lore about it that if you're familiar with the Johnny Gosh disappearance that actually happened here in West Des Moines, Iowa, there is said, there's rumored to be a connection between this camp and his disappearance. It's said that this camp was used for child trafficking. Not only that, but heavy cult activity. I never knew where it was actually located. And so a year ago, I dove in and I researched where it was at and I found it. Tiny and I actually took off one day and went and just kind of surveyed this camp. It's been abandoned and closed for several years. So we weren't really concerned about, you know, interacting with people at the camp itself, but more interacting with people driving around the camp. Now this camp is literally out in the middle of nowhere. However, here in Iowa, out in the middle of nowhere means farms. And there's plenty of farms and farmland that surround this camp. And that's private property, that's private land. And so these are things that you have to take into consideration. We went in there, we just went past the gate, investigated just a little bit, found some abandoned buildings in there, and decided, you know what? Let's plan to come back here at night and film an It's All Me video of us exploring this camp. Now, disclaimer, we were not supposed to go in there, okay? Just throwing that out there. We were not supposed to go in there. But this camp has such a lore about it, such a legend, that it almost was like, we have to. Being urbexers and people that love to explore abandoned buildings and, and explore you know, awesome places, we knew that we had to at least take the chance to get in there. And other things that are inside of this camp 
are a recreation of Devil's Tower, a creation of what this person that founded the camp believed to be the core of the earth, and this giant globe, and just like these weird creations. And you would actually follow walking trails through these different creations and end up inside the giant globe, which was created to look like what he believed to be <coughs> the core of the earth. Now, this place has no power, no electricity, so we knew we were going to be going in there blacked out. Only a night vision camera and some flashlights when we felt competent enough to use those. We headed out there late one night and we decided to park probably half a mile, three fourths of a mile away and walk through some fields to avoid the gravel roads that are around there. So we traversed through these fields, began to come to a point where we could have a vantage point for the camp itself. Time out. Let's have some more food. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Let's get some more syrup on this bad boy. Mm hmm. Guys. This waffle as a bun, it's fire. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna leave my hands dirty and my face dirty. All right, so we come to this vantage point where we can see the camp. And we probably have like a, a full city block left to go. We're close, but we still have, you know, some distance to travel. We realize that there's a, a farmhouse on the corner of the road that we're gonna be kind of traversing along. So we actually divert a little bit and go a little bit farther away from the camp to avoid any you know, interaction with that house. So we had to get down and kind of traverse through a creek bed and long grass and all this stuff. We're coming up out of this long grass and we're just about ready to start walking across a plain field. It's just grass, not a whole lot of coverage. Now granted, we're dressed for the moment, dressed in dark clothes or camouflage, you know, whatever. If someone were to turn a corner and flash their headlights out there, they would be able to see us most likely. So we're just kind of prepping ourselves and we're like raring and ready to go. And we start moving out and all of a sudden we look towards the camp and we see red and blue emergency lights. And I stop dead in my tracks and I look at everybody and I'm like, do you see this? Do you see what I'm seeing? So we quickly run back to the long grass and we just kind of start watching and observing the camp. Sure enough, here comes a police vehicle with its lights flashing, not flying down the road, heading to an emergency, but spotlighting the camp and spotlighting the field that we were just walking across. And had we not gone back to the long grass, they would have found us walking across this field. Now, reminder, we are not allowed to be in this camp. No trespassing. So we were going in there, breaking the law. Just throw that out there had a police officer seen us in that field, we would have been stopped and we would have been questioned. We would have had to talk about why we're traversing through a field towards a camp that's probably infamous for having people walk into it. So while we're watching this police vehicle, we're trying to figure out what is going on. Mm, guys, I'm telling you, Even though this, this waffle's really soggy because of the syrup, it mm, is delicious. Mm, mm. All right.
So, we're watching this police officer spotlighting the field. We're dropped to the ground as low as we can go. I mean, as deep into this as you can be with as much grass trying to find coverage in. And we were thinking, what is going on? Does, do they somehow know that we're gonna come explore this camp? So we're sitting there and all of a sudden the emergency vehicle is coming back the direction it was leaving and it's still spotlighting. And we are now stuck in this field, in the middle of a field with nowhere to go because the second we leave this long grass, we are fully exposed, okay? So it's not like we can just be like, quick, let's get out of here. Let's go, you know, run through the, uh, the field that we walked here to and, you know, we'll get away. This cop is present enough to where it's spotlighting enough and frequently enough that if we were to move, it would see us. So we are literally stuck, stuck laying in this long grass without the ability to move anywhere else because of fear of getting caught. So it finally moves past a, a tree line and we're just waiting for the lights of this police vehicle to leave. At this moment, we're having like this conversation as a group, like, okay, what is our next move? Do we continue moving forward towards this camp? Maybe we go over towards this tree line and hide amongst the trees. And then we're like, well, but what if the, the police are out of the vehicle because the lights had stopped. We couldn't tell where it was stopped, but the vehicle had stopped. The lights were still flashing and everything, but maybe the vehicle stopped and the officers got out and were you know, searching the area for who knows what, maybe us. So we decided like, okay, let's just hang tight for a minute. Let's see if the, the police lights leave. I may be off on my time here, but we probably laid in those those weeds, those that grass for like 20 to 30 minutes, just because we wanted to make sure there was enough cushion there that if we did decide to just take our trek back, that we would be safe enough to not be seen. So we waited until we just realized these police lights are not moving. We made the, the quick decision to start leaving. Now, we didn't want to be caught traversing through another field. Maybe they're searching other areas surrounding the camp. We didn't want to get caught walking through a field back to our vehicle because then that makes us look suspicious. Now where we parked is actually nearby a campground. So we did that on purpose so that if we were seen, we could say, yeah, we've just been out for a walk and you know, we're, our vehicle's down at the campground and we're just heading back there. So I felt the Lord telling me, listen, you just need to get back on the gravel road and start walking back towards your car. If they approach you, play it cool. So that's what we did. We packed up all of our gear, put it back in the, the backpacks, put the camera away, and we just started walking along one of the gravel roads. Now, here's the road that the vehicle is driving up and down. We were now walking up this road here. So we were going to connect with the road that the police is driving on. So there's a hill. We had to climb up this gravel hill. As we're nearing the top of it, we see emergency lights heading towards our direction, not from where we had been watching it, heading directly towards us. So that vehicle is driving this way, we're walking up a road here, it's coming from here. So we're gonna meet head on with an emergency vehicle. We look and almost as we're clearing the corner of it comes a fire truck fully lit up with emergency lights. I'm just like, you know, let's just keep walking. We'll just keep walking and act like, you know, we're concerned of what's going on, but not knowing what's going on. All of a sudden we turn this corner to head back towards the vehicle and police lights are flying towards our current location. At this moment, there is no hiding. There's no jumping in the ditch. There's no running across the road. There's no lying down in, in long grass. We have been seen by the police. Oh, mm. that's the best bite right there. And I don't know why. Let's get a drink here with my dirty hands. <sighs> All right. So we have been seen by the police, okay? A fire truck saw us, and now a police car saw us. And it's flying down this road. It is going so fast. It flies by us, slams on its brakes, and all of a sudden we look back and the reverse lights are on on this cop car. It's now backing up towards us and it starts questioning us. 
Hey guys, what you doing? I said, we're out for a walk. Let me try again. Hey guys, what you doing? And I looked at him and I said, what did I just say? We're out for a walk. Why is there a question about that? Well, we have a police searching the camp up ahead because of someone who wrecked into the vehicle of the owner of the camp and then ran from the scene. So at some point during our trip to the camp, some wild and out kid crashed into the vehicle of the person that owns the camp currently and then fled the scene. Now get this, he ran into the camp by himself to hide. They said, you, you need to stay here and just have you answer some questions for an investigating officer. I'm like, okay, we don't know what you're talking about, but okay. So a county sheriff pulls up, he approaches us, asks us our questions and says that we don't fit the profile of the person that was seen fleeing the scene and that we were free to go. So let me wrap around what happened here. The one night that we literally put together this covert mission to sneak into a camp that is close to the public, that's been abandoned for years, rumored to have very, very dark cult activity and possible children sex trafficking. The same night we decided to go do that is the night God stepped in and was like, uh-uh, and allowed for this accident to happen to cause a police vehicle to drive in front of the camp at the exact moment that we were gonna traverse into that camp where an investigation is now going on. Had we got into that camp 10 minutes earlier, if we'd gotten to that long grass 10 minutes earlier, we would have been inside of that camp while police surrounded it and searched it for a hit and run suspect. Just take a second, just take a second and understand the severity of that situation. One, we're in a camp that we're not supposed to be in. Two, there was a hit and run accident where someone fled into the camp to hide from the police. And three, now we are in that camp as well and we're not supposed to be there. Now how guilty do we look? Now we're smart, we don't, we don't go about these you know, missions or whatever with ignorance or arrogance because both of those will get you caught doing something stupid real fast. But we took it step by step by step by step. We even considered continuing into the camp with those police lights present but ultimately decided what's more important here, not getting in trouble with the law tonight or having a really cool video put on my, my YouTube channel. Well, we chose not getting in trouble with the law. I'm telling you that was one of the craziest nights ever. And I wanted so bad to be able to bring that to my channel, but it just wasn't fate. God said, you know what? I got other plans. I don't want you guys getting in trouble. So we're gonna go ahead and just close those gates, hypothetically, for you guys to continue in. So that wraps up the story about the It's Only video that never was, that never happened. We took steps to create that video, but ultimately it was a dead end. In a very tense, adrenaline rush filled dead end. So on that note, let's finish up this beautiful burger. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to put together. I really enjoyed telling the story. I hope that you felt the tense nature of the, the moment that we experienced that night, the adrenaline that we experienced. And if you haven't, go back and listen again and allow yourself to just be engulfed in the story. Put yourself in that position. You're sneaking into a place where you're not supposed to be. You're not allowed to be by law. And then as you're going to do that, the law is literally at the front gates seemingly waiting for you and you have no idea why. If you guys like this mukbang mukbang video, leave a comment down below. Make sure you hit that like button just so I know that you guys enjoyed this. And if you want more eating videos, let me know. I love food. I'm always willing to make a big keto meal and give it the best that I can. I can tell other stories that I have from my life or whatever it might be. But for now, I'm gonna see if I can leave you guys with another burp. <laughs> and remember, it's all knee and no foot, and we will see you in the next one.